Pacific Northwest was a logger's dream. The first sawmill was erected at Fort Vancouver in 1828 as part of the Hudson's Bay Company. The first shipment of Oregon timber was sent to China in 1833. By 1900, the Great Lakes area timber was exhausted and companies moved to the West Coast. Between 1880s and the 1940s, intensive logging occurs due to technological developments and large capital investments. The U.S. Forest Service was created in 1905 to conserve and manage the forest for sustainable use. Hello again, everyone. This is Guy Hemlin with Trail Keepers of Oregon. I'm a crew leader with TKO, and this is the fifth of a series of training videos covering basic or introductory crosscut sawyer information. It's important to mention, however, that this material does not substitute nor qualify for an official Forest Service sanctioned sawyer training course. In the previous module, we went through the OLEC cut plan, and, are, and now we are preparing the job site for the actual log cuts. This green fir was full of branches and fell into an understory of vine maple and huckleberry. These AmeriCorps crew members demonstrate a great job of preparing the site before they began to saw. Note that there is no obstruction to the saw motion and they both have an escape route if the log moved during the release. Also note that there is a, a small log under the tree. During the clearing process, they found material to slide in under the log and lift it off the ground. They used a series of wedges and blocks of wood to lift the log to minimize the bind for the second cut. Support aids include log rails, skids, logs, and rock cribbing, and two to three inch diameter green logs that can be used for levers. Sometimes the saw team needs to build a full bench area for proper footing to work on. On another note, is this Sawyer on the safe side of the log? For a homework question, why would a saw team clear dirt and debris out from underneath a log? Build log or rock cribbing to catch the dropping log in order to change the binds for subsequent cuts. A general rule is that your first cut should make your second cut easier. If possible, Plan ahead to control or change the binds of your second or subsequent cuts. By using a lever, you can create a significant mechanical advantage. But don't overdo it. Get assistance. Another example of using a lever to create a mechanical advantage. Supporting the cut piece on a log rail reduces the amount of force needed to roll, pivot, or slide the cut piece off the trail. This log required six or seven cuts to clear the trail. Since the sides of the trail are full, the constraint here is where can you put the cut pieces? If possible, move your cut pieces far off trail, not only for appearance, but for situations like this, where there is now no room for the cut pieces to be discarded. Create log rails that will carry the whole log right over the obstacles on the ground. In some cases, it might be safer to make one cut to reduce the weight of the log. On the other hand, if you can make gravity work for you, Use cut limbs for skids or rails, and have a plan for the cut pieces before they are cut. Preparing the area is key for less work in the end. Note how the cut pieces were staged to allow them to fall onto rails to be easily rolled off the trail. Again, if possible, 
move logs well off trail to make room for next year's logs. Notice the rails set up to let the cut piece roll. With proper planning, sometimes it's easier to let gravity work for you. Good job. Let's see how they held it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here it goes. Careful. thing that's holding it is the, the wedge the, the wedge the center wedge drops in there yeah i'm gonna move it okay Video time <laughs> all right okay. well, got it there it goes oh, james wait, is wait, working wait, wait. on it oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> remember this <laughs> how could you forget it right now that you have your job site ready for the planned cuts, let's quickly review our complexity versus qualifications matrix document again. Although hard to read, this slide is a trade-off between the complexity of the objective at the job site versus the qualifications of the Sawyer team lead. All the elements shown are a guide to determine the overall complexity of the objective. For instance, if you have an A log, that is, the objective has most of the elements listed for an A log, it can easily be removed by a B Sawyer team. On the other hand, if you have a C log, that is, the objective has most of the elements listed for a C log, a B Sawyer is not qualified to remove this C log. The B Sawyer team must consider this a no-go and walk away and flag this log for a C Sawyer. Of course, it is never e this easy to determine the complexity of an objective, but there are some very good simple guidelines that saw teams can follow. Fortunately, Actual logout experience makes this process easier than it looks on this chart. We will discuss the actual pl cut plan in more detail in the part six module on bind analysis and cut plan. But consider this a peek ahead. All of these elements of the plan must be discussed by the SAW team. And for the SAW team to ask questions if they are not understanding or comfortable with the plan. Not seen in this photo are two eight inch maple logs that were used as skids to move this half ton cut piece. Always look for local materials to help make the work easier. The skids save this crew two cuts on this 44 inch log. Before leaving the site preparation discussion, Let's discuss the trail width and height requirements. These are the general measurements for a trail corridor used by equestrians. That is, any trees or brush in the eight foot wide by 10 foot high window or corridor should be brushed or cut. For a hiker only trail, the general corridor measurements are six feet wide by eight feet high. Make sure to ask the land manager or agency for their specific trail requirements. Now that you have seen the trail corridor requirements, would you cut this? This hiker cannot touch the log with his hands. This is a trick question. The leaner is the obvious answer, but is this a felling or bucking operation? For the leaner, it depends whether the root ball is attached or not. If attached, 
it's a felling operation and therefore a no-go for a bucking only team. The horizontal tree is too high unless you go way off tread and it has already been cut back enough for this equestrian trail. Another possible solution is to tie a rope as high as possible on the leaner and pull the leaner from a safe distance. Or, if the root ball is detached, use a rope puller to pull the entire tree until it falls. All logs should be secure off trail. On larger projects that require lots of tools, it is easy to lose small items. Count them before and after. Don't just be a sawyer. Our TKO mission is trail maintenance. Take appropriate tools to restore the tread after you clear the logs. This picture is from the Duckabush Trail in the Olympics National Forest. The team had to cut rounds so they could roll them 100 feet down the trail to get them out of the equestrian trail corridor. Come join us for some cross-cut sun log saw log out fun.